Hi everybody, this is Noelle. We're here at Jason's Raised Bed Garden. Hello. Um, it is August and Jason's been harvesting and yep. um, tomatoes. We're, we're talking <laughs> tomatoes. Now, Jason grew a lot of tomatoes from seed. Um, you planted some plants as well. Yep. Um, and so we're gonna kind of talk about trials and tribulations with the <laughs> tomato plants. Don't get me wrong, he has got um, a picture of this beautiful caprese salad that he made with all the different colors of tomatoes he has. So Taylor will show you that. Um, but amongst the, the, the beautiful harvest that he continues to have, he definitely had some issues this yeah. year. So, <laughs> so let's talk about, first of all, um, the types that you did grow. You had several heirloom varieties, mm -hmm. everything from like a teeny tiny little sprinkles yep. cherry. I mean, really cute, really sweet, kind of thick skin, but it was really nice. Mm -hmm. And then um, you have a atomic grape. Am I yep. doing that right? So it's a bigger sort of, um, almost like a, an, I don't it, know. It's like a it's not a cherry shaped plum shaped. It's I grew that for the cool factor because it was an exotic, also an heirloom, um, and it's got oranges and greens and purples. Yeah, um, and it's juicy. It is really juicy. Yeah, we'll show you that one too. And then you've got some older like um, German Johnsons yep. and Cherokee purple. So yep. some air, you know, some true true heirloom types. Yep. And we were talking about with the heirlooms, how um, you can get them grafted mm -hmm. to kind of help um, give them more vigor, yeah. better disease resistance, mm -hmm. increased production, if yeah. you will. Um, but they, they grow well in our area. However, with heirlooms, <laughs> heirlooms are the old school cool where they are not resistant to anything. anything. <laughs> Powdery mildew, early blight, late blight. Um, Wilts. Well, it yeah. is spots. Anything you can think of. <laughs> very. It's not a matter of if. It's kind of a matter of when. And if you're right. up on paying attention and taking care of them, you can really extend your harvest sure. really, really, really deep. Also, to keep in mind, because heirlooms are again old school cool, they typically are a much longer length of time from transplant to harvest. Mm -hmm. We were talking earlier about peppers and how the early heat of the season helped the peppers advance pretty quickly, yep. produce well. Um, those plants have stayed really clean for you, mm -hmm. whereas the heat early on in the season for tomatoes, not so much. No, it's, so I'm sure if any of y'all have grown tomatoes this year, you've noticed that you've got a lot of fruit. It's taken forever to ripen that's because of the heat. So the heat's gonna push out that foliage growth real quick. Um, you factor in a lot of humidity, so now you have less fruit ripening because you really want low 70s for best fruit ripening. High humidity, high temperature is prime for fungal issues. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, and Jason has them, despite the fact you, you were spraying, um, you know, fairly regularly, but once the, the fruit were setting and, and things were kind of uh, maturing mm -hmm. as they did, it's hard to stay on top of it. Yeah. And um, so this goes to the staking issue. So we, we always talk about staking, um, especially vining plants, so mm -hmm. tomatoes included. Mm -hmm. um, the staking, of course, helps um, support the plant, but also to increase the air circulation around the tomato. Now, let's hear about your staking tribulations. <laughs> so I have, um, starting out in the season when the plants are just wee little babies, you know, when they're this big, you can get away with, you know, the four foot, three and a half foot tall stakes. The other thing with growing, for what I did, mostly heirlooms, they are big plants. Mm -hmm. I mean, four, five, six foot tall plants easily. And when you've got a big plant that produces pound, pound and a half fruit, thin stakes, they bent over the first time, first couple rains, they were doing okay. And after that, the plants literally just pulled all the stakes down. What I would recommend is spend the extra money to get either tomato cages and the tall ones, or um, at Petiti's, the actual hardwood tomato stakes, they're about three quarters of an inch square, or even the six foot bamboo ones. I restaked a lot of them in my garden just because the plants are getting, I mean, a lot of them now, they're 
six right. and a half foot tall. Yeah, so um, you'll see those, and and you'll see <laughs> you'll see how big they have become yeah. as well. Um, and then other issues with the tomatoes. I mean, you've been harvesting fairly regularly. Yeah. You had said uh, most of these varieties are indeterminate, so they're vining types. They're going to keep on producing for you, but you felt like because of the heat of the season, and then when it got cooler. They kind of all matured all at, at once. once. Yeah, so it was like you have all these indeterminate types that all of a sudden became determinate because they all were pushing out the yeah. flowers, maturing yeah. and all at one time. But mm -hmm. they, they have continued to do so. And um, we were talking about how you really can, um, you know, harvest the tomato. Like, let's say it's about 75, 80% ripened. It's not quite ready yet, but if you need to get them off the vine, yep. you can put them on the counter or mm -hmm. the windowsill at home, not a problem. Don't put them in the refrigerator. Never refrigerator. Yeah, <laughs> and um, you know, let them ripen that way too. Yep. And if you're concerned about that bottom foliage, you know, yellowing, browning, um, having a lot of problems, it's okay to continue to defoliate those, mm -hmm. those vines. Most of the energy from your tomatoes, once you start getting mid to late season, you really want to even start thinning out and removing your bottom two and even three layers of leaves. More often times than not, they're, they're getting shaded because the plant is getting fairly good size by that point. Two, because they are getting shaded, they're actually sapping energy away from the tomatoes because they're trying to get bigger and bigger to reach the sun and because they're close to the ground, whenever it rains or if we're watering inadvertently, that's gonna be the start of your Petri dish for all of your fungal issues. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Your difference between your heirlooms and your hybrids, why don't you share with that? So heirlooms, in my opinion, are completely different flavor. Um, a lot more complex flavor, much better tasting. Um, generally, most of your heirlooms length of time is a lot greater. You're talking 75, 80, 90 days plus. Now, that day, like so if you look at the tags or if you buy a packet of seeds, it says 80 days. Great, that's not 80 days from the time that you the seed sprouts or germinates. It's 80 days from the time you put it into the ground as a starter plant. Right. So right. days to maturity is long period of time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a lot of times people are like, oh, I got my first tomato and it's, you know, the end of June. I'm like, I did, but that was the Rapunzel and that's kind of a cheater plant. <laughs> um, but a lot of that now is the heirlooms now, they're just starting to ripen now because they're, a, you know, an 80, 85 day sure, maturity. Sure, they're, slow. they're mm -hmm. slow. And then your hybrids, on the other hand, like you were saying, Jetstar. Jetstar was a great Fantastic. producer for you. Fantastic. So flavor-wise, compared to an heirloom, what what do you say? Flavor-wise, for to me, for the hybrids, you're going to get much more of a... Okay, average? An average, it's a great tomato taste. Um, still better than your department stores, no knock against them. Um, but it, it just doesn't have that flavor profile that your heirlooms will. Okay. The other flip side of that is A, on average, much faster. B, a lot more disease resistant, which is why they're hybridized to re resist against a lot of that. Yeah, absolutely. And you just got, you got development, beautiful development, no, you know, um, cat face issues, no, no, no spotting, no cracking, well, everything it's, was just developing really nicely for you. Yeah, that, yeah. the Jetstar for me, um, out of the hybrids is probably one of my favorites. It's a pretty tomato, about baseball size at full size, um, very crack resistant, bright fire engine red, um, very uniform across all of the fruit sets and just overall a really, really solid plant. Yeah, so um, I, I think, you know, more than anything, try, experiment. Again, mm -hmm. we always talk about gardening as experimentation and try different varieties, some from seed, some from plants, um, just because, you know, I, I, again, you might be surprised at what you, you find that you might like a hybrid over mm -hmm. an heirloom, over, you know, uh, the maintenance that you have to uh, supply those plants. So again, um, it's always good to try different things out in the garden. And um, especially, you know, this year has been a interesting growing season, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, there's, there's so much to grow out there and garden out there. So